Hello and welcome to the UCD Agriculture, Food Science and Human Nutrition Summer School 2020. My name is Damien Dempsey, I'm the Marketing Manager in the School of Agriculture and Food Science and we are delighted you can join us today for this online interactive experience. We'll be hearing from various members of the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science community, including a welcome from Professor Alexander Evans, UCD Dean of Agriculture. We'll hear from Professor Kevin McDonald at UCD Lions Farm. From the UCD Institute of Food and Health, my colleague Dr. Africa Sullivan will provide you with an overview of some of the exciting research taking place. UCD Professor of Agriculture and Food Economics, Michael Wallace, will provide you with some details about research underpinning the Food and Agribusiness Management Program and the Food Business with Chinese Studies Program. And then we have the wonderful Dr. Dara Stanley, who will provide an update on teaching and research in agri-environmental sciences. You'll also have an opportunity to hear from a selection of our students and graduates about the various opportunities that are available. We have designed an interactive quiz on Kahoot, so please be sure to listen attentively to be in with a chance to win some UCD merchandise. We'll be announcing the winner of the quiz on our social media channels at UCD Ag Food once the the summer school has been completed. So let's get things started and hear from the Dean of Agriculture, Professor Alex Evans. Good morning and I extend a very warm welcome to you today to the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science Summer School. In the summer school today you will learn that our school is one of the largest schools in UCD and that we offer a broad array of undergraduate and postgraduate programs. You're going to hear testimonials from some of our current students. You'll learn a little bit about what they're studying, how they live and what they enjoy about UCD, the campus and what it has to offer. You'll also hear testimonials from some of our past students. You'll learn about how their degrees in UCD set them up for their careers and you'll learn a little bit about the life they've had after having left UCD. You'll also hear a little bit about some of the research projects that are going on in the school in the areas of agriculture, food science and human nutrition. UCD and indeed the school have some of the finest scientists in the world working on these topics. And uh, I encourage you to think a little bit about how you might be able to get in involved in some of these and other projects later on in your, in your studies. I'm coming to you today in unusual times. We are encouraged to stay at home. We are discouraged from traveling. I hope you stay safe. Most of all, I look forward to meeting you in UCD this autumn. My best wishes. Thank you, Alex. Now let's go to UCD Lions Farm to hear from Professor Kevin McDonald. Following Kevin's contribution, we'll also hear from two of our undergraduate students, Laura and Chris. Hello, and welcome to the UCD Virtual Summer School 2020. My name is Kevin McDonald, and I'm based between the School of Agriculture and Food Science and the School of Biosystems and Food Engineering. And today I'm talking to you from the Sunny College Research Farm, UCD Lions Farm. And this is a facility which is on the outskirts of Dublin, located between Selbridge and Leakslip, and it supports the teaching and research platforms for the School of Agriculture and Food Science and the School of Veterinary Medicine. So the facilities that we have here in Lions Estate, they act as the supporting tools for a teaching program that we have in the School of Agriculture and Food Science. So across their four years, students from dairy business, from animal science, animal and crop production, from equine science, from the agricultural systems technology program, and from the new crops production program, they'll be coming to Lions to put into practice in this outdoor laboratory the, the lessons that they have learned and to support their in-class teaching with the trials and the research that we're doing here at Lions Estate. Now on the farm, we have a 200 cow dairy herd, we have 400 yews in the sheep flock, we have approximately 100 animals in the beef herd, we have horses to support the equine sector, we have pigs for the piggery, we also have about 50 hectares of combinable crops under the crops research program. And if we consider agriculture in Ireland, one of the key aspects associated with it is the production of grass. 
And the production of grass is hugely important for Irish agriculture. It underpins the dairy sector, it underpins the beef sector, the sheep sector, the horse sector. So it's really critical that we do this and we do this well. So one of the programs that we're looking at is how could we manage to use grass as a source of carbon sink and to sequester carbon into the grass program. So we're looking at a range of different types of grass varieties. We're looking at combinations of grass with legumes and with herbs to see how it supports the carbon sequestration potential. And that enables us to reduce the carbon footprint associated with dairy production, with beef production, sheep production. On our crop production side of it, we're seeing a lot more changes in weather patterns at the moment. So we're getting more droughts, we're getting more severe rainfall events. And that's changing how crops and indeed grassland respond. So we have set up a number of different experiments to see how could crops respond to these production strategies. So we have wheat trials that are looking at different compaction, different water levels. We're looking at if a crop is experiencing severe levels of drought, will that change the ability of it to produce uh, grains? So we're looking at if we know that, could we manage that crop a little bit differently? We're using advanced tools such as sensors in the ground, sensors on the leaves of the plant to measure how the plant is responding. We're using drones to capture hyperspectral imaging, images of those crops. So we're looking at the, the non-visible part of the spectrum and we're seeing are there changes in how that grass is growing or how that crop is growing that the drones can pick up and help us make better management decisions at an earlier intervention stage in that crop or in that grassland production strategy. So if we take an example of oats and how oats have changed in the last couple of years, historically we use them for uh, equine feeds, for horse feeds. But now because of their gluten-free content, we're using them in celiac diets. So oats have a slow release of energy, which is really useful for people. So if you're using oats, for example, in your breakfast cereal, it's a slow release of energy throughout the day. So that's very, very useful. However, oats are very vulnerable to wet weather diseases. And in Ireland, that can be a problem as well. So what we're looking at is ways of how we might manage oats. So we're looking at, for example, different production strategies. We're looking at the different genetics that we can express in the oats as well to see which varieties might grow well. We're looking at timing of establishment as well to see could we influence the ability of plants to sustain wet weather diseases. So that's an important part of what we can do on, for example, cereals. We're also looking at, for example, malting barley. And the malting barley supports uh, the, the agri-food industry, the drinks industry, and especially the whiskey sector. So the quality of the malt that we're producing in Ireland is internationally recognised and we're looking at ways of supporting that through both winter and spring crops. So there's good opportunities in supporting those sort of agri-sector industries. And part of that, I suppose, lends itself to the innovations associated with agriculture. So we're developing an agri-hub here at Lyons Estate. It's going to be developed in conjunction with Nova UCD. And that's giving companies an opportunity to work more closely with us. We have historically worked with a lot of companies in Lyons Estate. But this agri-hub brings them closer into us. They're going to spin into us. They have particular problems they want to solve. They want to work with the expertise that we have here, the international linkages we have. That brings SMEs into a whole international dimension and gives them the opportunity to learn from international experiences as well. So that innovations hub allows companies to spin in to solve problems, to think a little bit about what will the future be for the agri-food agri sector, and then to help students think about how might they innovate a little bit more? So when they come to Lyons, we're going to get them to think outside the box a little bit more. We build upon the principles they've learned in Belfield, but we're looking to see where do you think the sector is going in the next five to 10 years? Do you want to see the changes that are evolving the sector? These people, these graduates, you will be the leaders, the innovators in this sector of the next five to 10 years. So let's challenge your thinking now. Let's change how you might look at dairy production. Let's change how you might look at grassland production because that's going to change the strategy for food production going forward. We've had great examples of companies that have spun out of lines. For example, in the horse breeding side of it, in the speed genes associated with it, we've had spin-outs in sheep genetics, we've had spin-outs in grass production strategies, in also trials associated with precision agriculture. And we're using all of these tools to enhance the whole digital agricultural space, which is the next evolving platform associated with agriculture. So I hope you've enjoyed this whistle-stop tour of the teaching and research that we have here online. Farm. It supports the teaching programs in the School of Agriculture and Food Science. It's been a wonderful sunny day here today and I hope that you'll join us here at Lyons Estate when you come and do your program in UCD in the School of Agriculture. I can't guarantee the weather will be as good. We'll certainly have plenty of animals and crops and research for you to see here and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summer school in UCD 2020.
Hi, my name's Laura Maloney. I'm a third year ag science student in UCD and I'm studying animal and crop production. I decided to apply to go to UCD when I was in sixth year doing my leaving cert and I heard about the course through my career guidance teacher and I also attended the open day at UCD. I loved the campus, there was a great atmosphere around and they have such a wide range of facilities on offer. I spoke to a couple of Ag Science graduates before I started the course and that gave me an insight into a couple of the opportunities that you could get from doing the course, whether it's travelling abroad for your work placement and career paths that you might take when you've graduated. There's such a broad range of things that you can do with Ag Science, whether you want to go down the business route or the more practical and sciencey side, which I chose, which was animal and crop production. I really like animal and crop production because it's quite practical as well and you do labs which contribute to your final grade which takes a lot of pressure off you around exam time and you also go on lots of trips out to the UCD uh, research farm which is in Kildare. So I found all the lecturers in UCD so helpful as well as the students and especially students that are in the years above you. Everyone is just willing to help out. Um, as well as the academic side, there's the social side and the ag sock is brilliant. So there's always something exciting happening, whether it's ag ball, there's often ag taking me out nights or ag week is another one and there's always something going on. A main part of the um, ag science course is your professional work placement, which you do in third year. So from January to August of the second semester, you're out in placement the entire time and you organise this yourself but you get lots of help from your PWE coordinator. With animal and crop production you have to do a minimum of four weeks on each enterprise so that's beef, sheep, pigs, dairy and tillage. You get plenty of opportunities to go abroad if that's what you want to do. So for my pigs I stayed local and I done four weeks in January and I done the same with beef uh, four weeks in February and then for my dairy I travelled to Wales for 12 weeks where I worked on a dairy farm. We were milking 700 cows and it was a brilliant experience. I got to do a bit of everything from calving to calf rearing, milking. I even got some machinery experience when they were doing silage. And I feel like going abroad is brilliant because you get to learn new things that you could bring home, especially if you're from a farming background and you could implement them at home. And it was quite challenging to go away for such a long time especially on your own, um, but it was definitely worth it because it was a brilliant experience and I'm really glad that I done it. <clears throat> I suppose with the work experience, the more you put yourself out there, the more contacts you make and the more that's going to stand to you in the future. I would highly recommend ACD to anyone who's thinking about it to speak to as many people as you can. It's an extremely diverse course and there's so many opportunities and different career paths that you can get out of it. And I've really enjoyed my time there so far. My name is Chris Heffernan and I've just completed my fourth and final year of studying Agricultural Science in UCD. I always knew Agricultural Science was the degree for me, however I wasn't exactly sure what stream I'd like to pursue, so I entered UCD using the Omnibus option. Having had a keen interest in accounting during my leaving cert, I was sure that farm and agribusiness management would probably be the choice for me. However, having completed my first year in UCD, I realised a more science-based stream, such as animal science, was actually for me. Being from Kerry, moving to Dublin was extremely daunting for me. However, I found the Peer Mentor Programme extremely supportive. The Peer Mentor Programme is when the School of Agriculture and Food Science divides up the first year incoming students into groups of roughly five to six students. Each group is assigned a Peer Mentor. They'll be there to bring them around the college, They'll show them all the different facilities, um, exactly where their lectures are going to be, where their labs are going to be. But most importantly, they're there for them throughout the year as a support to answer any of their questions. I was lucky enough to complete a semester abroad in my second semester of third year in Cornell University in upstate New York. Cornell University is currently the number one in North America for animal science and needless to say the education I got was second to none. 
I was lucky enough to be able to focus on dairy science. So the modules I studied were dairy production, um, dairy herd health, dairy herd management, dairy nutrition. All modules I feel would be an asset to me in my future career. Also, while studying abroad, I had the opportunity to travel. Um, during my February break, I was lucky enough to travel to Miami. And during my spring break, which would be the Easter break here, I was able to uh, travel to Puerto Rico, where I got to see um, the, all the different cultures and amazing um, areas of natural beauty, such as uh, tropical rainforest, which is something I never thought I'd be able to see. While studying in Cornell, I was also able to complete a portion of my PWE in the university research farm. Here I was able to aid in research trials, collecting samples and noting observations and getting a real insight into how a PhD actually functions. Studying abroad gave me a real perspective in the large scale global industry that Ireland is a part of. It showed me the amazing world that's outside there and all the different opportunities there are, but also the, main, the amazing opportunities we have here in Ireland that we need to exploit. Thank you, Chris. The UCD Institute of Food and Health is a collaborative multidisciplinary centre of excellence that exists within the school. Now let's hear from Dr. Africa Sullivan, who is a key member of the Institute and also the Associate Dean for Internationalisation within the School of Agriculture and Food Science. Following Africa's contribution, we'll hear from Leah, a human nutrition student. Hi, my name is Africa Sullivan. I'm a lecturer in the School of Agriculture and Food Science. My colleagues and I teach accredited programs in food science and human nutrition. My own area is human nutrition and I'm just going to talk you through a couple of examples of research projects and then I'll come back and mention some of the programs in the school. So I'm recording the video here in UCD. You can see it's very quiet around me. Normally this area would be filled with students. I'm in here today to do some lab work on a vitamin D study. So in this vitamin D study we're interested in looking at the absorption of vitamin D from different types of foods to see if we can improve vitamin D absorption. We know in Ireland that about half of the population have low vitamin D levels and that's worrying because vitamin D is such an important nutrient. We need it for healthy bones but it's also got lots of other functions and research shows that low vitamin D levels are associated with an increased risk of diseases like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So in this project we're looking at how we absorb the vitamin D and then we're trying to improve the absorption to see if we can improve overall vitamin D levels. Next, I'm going to walk you through our human intervention suite and talk you through a typical day for a participant on the vitamin D study. So this is the UCD Institute of Food and Health Human Intervention Suite. We meet our participant here in the waiting room and we take them on through into the intervention room where we start our measurements. Once we're in here, we usually start with a height measurement and then we'll take body weight. We use a Tanita scale to do that because it lets us look at percentage body fat and then the proportion of weight that's due to muscle and bone mass. Once we've those measurements taken, then our nurse can come in and take a small blood sample. We put that blood sample onto ice and take it straight into the lab where we spin it down, divide it into small samples and put those into the freezer until we're ready to measure the vitamin D. After we've taken the first blood sample, then we ask our participant to drink one of the vitamin D study drinks. We wait a little while and we take some more blood. We use that then to look at the vitamin D and see how much vitamin D from the drink has gotten into the participant system. So the vitamin D study is just one example of a research project here in UCD. Uh, another really nice example is the National COVID Food Survey. We started this just after lockdown began because we wanted to see how the lockdown was going to affect people's diets and their eating behaviours. We had a really good response to it. We had over 4,000 people who signed up to participate and we got some really nice data out of it. So about 40% of people are saying they're eating more than they usually would. About 42% say that they're snacking more, so that's a change in eating behaviour. Then about 49% are saying they're eating more treat foods. 
and about 30% think that they have gained weight over the lockdown period. But on a positive note, about 54% say that they're exercising more, so that's a good outcome. So there's a lot more work we need to do with that data. We need to look at the patterns. We need to see how different subgroups are responding to the lockdown restrictions in terms of diet. And that will allow us to plan and better respond in similar situations in the future. So that's just a snapshot of my research. There's a whole lot of other research going on in the Institute. And if you want to find out more, you can go to the website. It's ucd.ie forward slash food and health. So I just want to talk a little bit more about our programs before I finish. Um, I teach human nutrition and I teach it mainly to human nutrition and food science students but I'm also Associate Dean for International Programs. So in our school all students have opportunities to go abroad. They can either go abroad and study for part of their year or they can go abroad as part of their work experience. So all of our programs have a professional work experience component to them. As well as that we have students that come from other universities and study with us either for one semester or maybe for a full year. And we have students from other countries that come to UCD or come to our school to study for their full four-year degree programme. So I suppose it's my job to work with our partner universities and to work with students that are coming into the school but also our students that are in the school that are going out to other universities um, during their degree programme to just help facilitate that international exchange. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about either the international opportunities or any of the programmes in the school, the best place to find information is ucd.ie forward slash ag food or follow us on social media at UCD ag food. So that's it from me for today. Um, if you're interested in any of the programmes I mentioned or if you're interested in the research that I talked about, then you might consider one of our programmes for when you finish school. For now though, enjoy the rest of the summer school, enjoy the rest of your holidays and I hope to see you in UCD in the future. My name is Leah Foyle and I just completed final year human nutrition in UCD. I started the course in 2016, ultimately due to my fascination of food and health and my desire to work with people. Having grown up in Dublin, I always wanted to attend UCD and I did not disappoint. The facilities, the grounds, the range of courses and the supportive lecturers have all added to my college experience and I've enjoyed all of my years in UCD. The course itself has been brilliant from the get-go. Its small size and supportive lecturers have made the transition so easy from the beginning. The course covers a range of topics and within first year you cover kind of broad science subjects and then get into more, uh, more specific nutrition subjects in subsequent years such as public health, nutrition research as well as clinical nutrition. A major part of the course is the, is the professional work experience. So it's in third year nutrition you get to spend the full year out on placement. This is a brilliant opportunity to gain so many skills and experiences that will add to your career later in life. In particular, it's very useful in the nutrition degree as you can experience industry research as well as hospital-based placements, whichever, whichever career you think would suit you best. I had the brilliant opportunity of completing my 10-month placement in the Children's Hospital in Crumlin. This, this experience was absolutely brilliant and gave me a real insight into how a dietitian works and what their day-to-day -day life is. I worked alongside the dietitians in research projects and clinical audits and it gave me so much experience and insight. I also made incredible contact, contact, contacts in this, in this career that I know will benefit me in my future life. Another major part of UCD life is the clubs and societies where there is a vast range across all different areas which will suit all different students. I became incredibly in involved in the UCD Volunteers Overseas Society. So this is a society based on campus that is linked to a registered charity which sends university students to different projects all over the world every summer. During my time in UCD, I've had the opportunity to travel to Uganda on five occasions and have, have had the chance to work alongside like-minded people from all different courses and make lifelong friends. In addition to this, in UCD, they're very good at, at acknowledging the hard work of students, whether that be through academics, sport or student activities. I personally have been awarded academic scholarships as well as the President's Award for Excellence for my work with UCD really showing that, the, that UCD values their students and their hard work and, and acknowledges all of that. 
Finally, the course in UCD, the nutrition course in UCD has been amazing. I have loved all of my time in UCD and would really recommend the university. The broad nature of nutrition allows you to explore different avenues of nutrition and ultimately decide what you want your career to be after the four years. I couldn't recommend the course or the university enough. Environmental Sciences, Horticulture and Forestry are important programmes within our school. We now hear from Dr Dara Stanley, a prominent staff member in the Agri-Environmental Sciences section of our school and Dara will provide an update on some of the teaching and research taking place. Following Dara's contribution, we'll hear from two students taking programmes in this section of the school, David and Henry. We're really sorry not to be joining you in person this year, but we're delighted you're able to join us virtually instead. So my name is Dara Stanley and I'm a lecturer in the School of Agriculture and Food Science where I teach primarily onto the Agri-Environmental Science degree programme but also onto the degree programmes in Horticulture, Forestry and Animal and Crop Production. We have huge challenges when it comes to agricultural production. We need to produce more food to feed a growing global population but at the same time we have huge environmental challenges, things such as climate change and biodiversity loss. Agriculture and the environment are inextricably linked. We need a healthy environment to support agriculture, but at the same time, agriculture can have impacts on the environment. So agriculture relies on having a healthy environment. Agriculture needs clean and healthy and functioning soils. Uh, it needs a clean and stable water supply. Uh, it needs good climate regulation, and it needs a whole host of what we call ecosystem services provided by the environment. These might be things such as uh, natural regulation of pest populations by wild insects, or this could be the provision of pollination services to crops by bees and other wild pollinators. But at the same time, agriculture can cause challenges for the environment. Uh, agriculture is a major contributor to, to climate change. Uh, agriculture can be involved in the pollution of water bodies uh, and other uh, ecosystems. Agriculture can also uh, be quite reliant on the use of chemical pesticides, which can also cause environmental problems. And agriculture has also been involved in the destruction of many uh, natural ecosystems and semi-natural habitats, things like the rainforest or things like hedgerows, uh, woodlands and semi-natural grasslands here in Ireland. So it's really important that we can find solutions uh, to ensure that we can feed our growing global population uh, and also ensure that we have a healthy environment that can keep supporting agricultural production into the future. So the area that I mainly research and teach into is entomology, which is the study of insects. And I teach entomology to the agro-environmental science degree, but also to the degrees in horticulture, forestry and animal and crop production. So uh, I'm sitting here in my garden at the moment and I'm surrounded by insects. I can hear bees buzzing, I can see some hoverflies, I've seen a beetle this morning. Insects are everywhere. And insects really are the uh, most diverse group of organisms that we have on the planet. So we've described over one million species of insects, uh, but it's estimated that we could have as many as five or 10 million different species and new species are being discovered all the time. So insects are the base of the food chain. They're really important food sources for a whole host of other uh, organisms, but they're also really important uh, in terms of the services they provide to natural ecosystems and also to agriculture. And insects are also really important as the pollinators uh, of some of our crops. So for example, 75% of uh, all the crops that we grow globally benefit in some way from pollination by bees and other insects. These are fruit crops, nut crops, seed crops, uh, oil crops. Examples of some of the crops that benefit from bees and other pollinators in Ireland are things such as oilseed rape, field beans, apples, strawberries, uh, clover, and so on and so forth. So a lot of the research and teaching that we do in agri-environmental science, it takes place in the lab, but it also takes place in the field. And we're really lucky to have a fantastic environmental research station on the UCD campus at Rosemount, uh, where a lot of this takes place. Uh, we also use UCD Lions Farm, and we also do a lot of work uh, countrywide in various habitats and various types of farmland around Ireland. Uh, a lot of the research that we do also takes place internationally. So for example, I have two PhD students working on separate projects in Africa, uh, one currently working in Ghana and one currently working in Zambia. 
some of the other areas that my colleagues in agroenvironmental science work on are looking at plant roots and how they interact with soils, uh, looking at organisms that are found in soil, for example earthworms and their role in different soil processes. Um, they also look at things such as wildlife conservation and how that interacts with agriculture uh, and also semi-natural habitats on farmland uh, and the role of agri-environmental schemes. We also look at things such as uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions from soils uh, and interactions with climate change. I hope I've managed to give you a flavour of some of the research and teaching that we do uh, in agri-environmental sciences at the School of Agriculture and Food Science at UCD. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is David Forte and I'm a second year student studying horticulture, landscaping and sports turf management in UCD. I'm from Dublin and I applied to this course through the CAO as a mature student. UCD is the only university in Dublin which provides level A horticulture from the beginning. The reason why I chose horticulture was I've always been interested in plants and wanted to pursue a career in this area. In first year, the course is shared with students from other disciplines in agricultural science. In second year, the larger class sizes become smaller as you learn more specialised subjects. The module I enjoyed the most was Principles of Horticulture as we got to grow our own plants and learn about different propagation methods. In third year, it's possible to go abroad on professional work experience to places like the US or Australia, for example. There is a horticulture society on campus where students can grow their own plants in their own dedicated polyton. I highly recommend horticulture in UCD. Hi. My name is Henry Tennyson and I've just completed my fourth and final year in Agri-Environmental Sciences. When completing my CEO, I chose Agri-Environmental Sciences due to my keen interest in both the environment and agriculture. This came from my parents who are both agricultural consultants and part-time beef and sheep farmers. I chose Agri-Environmental Sciences over the omnibus option in Ag Science due to the wide variety of topics associated with Agri-Environmental Sciences However, there's a lot of crossover between the two, so you will get the opportunity to learn about aspects such as environmental management, uh, grassland management, soil science and animal science. There's not just learning through the lectures, you also get great opportunities to learn um, in field trips and also through plant identification lab classes. So you get to go on field trips to places like the Burn in County Clare and other key environmental sites such as the Curra in County Kildare. During my third year in agri-environmental science, I got the opportunity to work with the Department of Agriculture for my professional work experience. During this time I got great exposure to different schemes such as GLOSS and the Organic Farming Scheme while also being involved in the development of the Common Agricultural Policy. While in UCD I also got great opportunities to experience different activities and sports such as squash, rock climbing and surfing. I also got the opportunity to represent UCD for squash in the universities where I uh, played against different colleges such as Trinity, NUIG, uh, the University of Limerick and the University College Cork. I've really enjoyed my past four years in UCD and I couldn't recommend the Agri-Environmental degree. In an ever-changing world, understanding the link between the environment, sustainable agriculture and food production is more important now than ever. Following the completion of this degree, I look forward to what the future holds for me. For anyone that has any interest in the environment, sustainability or agriculture, I couldn't recommend this degree enough. Not only for its learning potentials, but also for the facilities that the UCD campus holds and for a great four years. The agri-food sector is Ireland's largest indigenous industry. If you enjoy business and science, you may be interested in our food and agribusiness management programme. If you also like languages or open to trying a new language, then maybe you'd like to consider the Food Business with Chinese Studies programme. Let's hear from Professor of Agriculture and Food Economics at UCD, Professor Michael Wallace, 
about some of the teaching and research expertise available within that section of the school. Following Michael's contribution, we'll hear from Una Sinnott, a final year food and agribusiness management student. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Michael Wallace. I'm Professor of Agricultural and Food Economics within the school. I'd like to take you, tell you a little bit about our undergraduate program in Food and Agribusiness Management and also highlight some of our research in the area of agricultural and food economics. The Food and Agribusiness Management program is a unique combination of uh, agricultural science modules covering the animal, crop and food sciences with a specialism in business and economics applied to the agri-food industry. Our objective in the program is to provide students with the skills and knowledge for managerial and professional careers in the food production and marketing chain um, and the businesses and organizations that serve it. Our program takes a whole food supply chain perspective from farm to fork, covering the input supply uh, industries through to management of farm production and food processing, then through to distribution and retail and the consumer facing aspects of food marketing. And this means that there is a breadth of career opportunities available to our graduates in areas such as sales and marketing, in production management, whether at farm level or in the wider food industry, through to roles in finance and accounting and um, in areas such as marketing research along with many other areas. So why do I think that Agri-Food offers exciting opportunities for graduates? Well, firstly, I would say that uh, the food industry uh, by necessity is an expanding uh, sector uh, because of the requirements of meeting the nutritional needs of a rising global population, which is forecast to increase by about 50% by uh, 2050. And at national level, agri-food is our largest indigenous industry and accounts for about 8% of the national economy in employment and output terms. It's a really important sector. Um, it's also a sector that's very outward facing with a global perspective and, and that reflects the fact that our agri-food industry exports uh, some 90% of the uh, food that we produce nationally and um, th those food products are shipped to markets all around the world. Um, in 2019, Irish agri-food exports were uh, around 13 billion euros and it's forecast that that will increase further to about 19 billion by 2025. So a growing uh, industry with an international perspective. And it's also uh, a sector that is very dynamic, um, uh, fast moving, and, and that reflects the the nature of our just-in-time supply chains, the fact that we're working with perishable products, um, the uh, fact that we're dealing with global logistics, um, and all the issues that arise with those, as well as the requirements of being responsive to customer requirements, not just in terms of quantity, but especially in terms of quality attributes, um, and issues around traceability, transparency, um, and uh, the sustainability credentials of the, the food that we supply. Uh, so really exciting issues uh, that give rise to lots of opportunities for graduates. What are some of the key research areas in agri-food economics? Much of our research focuses on the evaluation of agricultural food and environmental policies as they impact on the agri-food sector. Uh, so that includes, for example, uh, assessing the effects of reforms of the EU common agricultural policy uh, and the potential impacts on uh, agricultural commodity markets, farming incomes, or 
aspects of national policy, such as measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. And we also do analyses of specific uh, events, such as um, you know, Brexit or the most recent COVID-19 pandemic and the potential economic impacts on the agri-food uh, sector. An important area of our research focuses on the uh, analysis of the performance of farming systems in terms of profitability, technical efficiency and environmental impact. Uh, and much of that work explores the effects of areas of technical innovation or management strategies at the farm level and how they impact on specific measures of uh, performance at the farm level. Some of my colleagues are involved in developing uh, measures of sustainability at the farm level uh, and that includes the development of, of metrics or indicators for uh, sustainability across the three dimensions of economic, environmental and social sustainability. We also do specific subsector type studies, uh, perhaps focusing on an area like the beef uh, industry or the tillage uh, sector. And um, those types of studies will often involve the structure, conduct, performance paradigm in uh, economics. And that will include evaluating the um, organizational structure of the industry and how that has evolved through to uh, the impacts of that structure on the conduct of the businesses and how they compete with one another and then in turn the measures of performance of the sector that arise from those competitive uh, strategies. An important area of our research uh, seeks to improve understanding of food consumer product and service needs and their buying behaviours. So this includes uh, consumer um, studies uh, that evaluate current market trends for specific product areas, for example, like the meat areas of meat consumption, um, or um, seek to evaluate consumers' willingness to pay for particular new product innovations or product attributes. And obviously that information helps businesses better understand consumer requirements and market demand. My name is Una Sinnott and I am a four-year soon-to-be graduate from the Food and Agribusiness Management course in UCD. Now when I was your age I actually attended the summer school in UCD so it's with great privilege that I am here today to talk to you about my course and to tell you all and encourage you all to come to UCD and to perhaps take up my course which is the Food and Agribusiness Management course in UCD. I have to tell you, I attended the summer school in UCD and my heart was set on food and agribusiness in UCD from an early age really. I was in transition year when I decided that's what I wanted to do and I never hesitated after that. And that meant a lot to me because I know it's very stressful trying to decide what to do. And um, what I did was I focused on what jobs interested me. So let's say if it was journalism or marketing or being a researcher, any of those kind of jobs, wherever I could imagine myself being that in that career, it was always for me, it was always an agricultural journalist or researching agricultural affairs or something got to do with food. Or if it was marketing, it was the marketing of a food product. So I suppose there was one common denominator there then for me and that was the industry. So it was food and agribusiness. 
So then I had my heart set on UCD and the Food of Agribusiness course, management course. And it really was the right decision for me. It offered great extracurricular activities. The module course content itself was what I was interested in and what I loved. So that was a great help. And then also there's just so many opportunities after studying food and agribusiness in UCD. So you've got national opportunities, but you've a lot of global opportunities as well. And I, I really felt at home the minute I arrived on the Belfield campus, mainly because of the extracurricular activities and also the community of people that are in UCD. The campus in UCD is a very welcoming place and it's a very encouraging place where you can be yourself and you can do what you want to do because UCD campus has everything for you, no matter if you like jazz or if you like traditional Irish music, there's a society for you. If you love karate or if you love playing football, Gaelic football, there's a society for you. Or perhaps you just want to sit back and watch movies. Well, UCD has a cinema waiting for you. So there really is so many opportunities in UCD and no matter what you feel is your place to be, UCD accommodates that. And um, for me, that was GAA. I play a lot of camogie. So I felt very at home on the GA pitch in UCD. And then also I got very involved in debating and public speaking within the School of Agriculture in UCD. So those two extracurricular activities. So in my first week in UCD, I started um, trialing out for the UCD camogie team. And the camogie team was a great part of my years in UCD. I was involved in all my years, first year right up to fourth year on the senior camogie team in UCD. I love it so much. I'm trying my best to get back to UCD um, for the next four years. So that's a good sign, I believe. And it would show you how much I really loved UCD. And I hope you get to enjoy UCD as much as I did. But I suppose the main reason or the main chance of you doing that is by picking a course in the School of Agriculture in UCD. Make the friends, make the connections, and you'll have the time of your life. Thank you very much. Prospective students often inquire where do our graduates find employment? We are very fortunate in the School of Agriculture and Food Science at UCD that our graduates are in high demand. In fact, you may have noticed that UCD was ranked number one in Ireland in the graduate employability rankings in 2018, 2019, and 2020. We're now going to hear from Owen Cashman, a final year agricultural sciences student at UCD. Owen also held the coveted position of chairperson of the AgSoc Careers Committee, where he presided over the Agriculture, Food Science and Human Nutrition Careers Fair 2020, which was attended by more than 50 exhibitors. Following Owen's contribution, we'll also hear from a selection of our graduates to highlight the wide ranging opportunities available to our graduates. We hope you enjoyed today's summer school. If you'd like to find out more, you can visit us at www.ucd.ie forward slash agfood, where you can download a copy of our prospectus. You can also follow us on any of our social media channels at UCD Ag Food, where we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you for attending our summer school. We hope you enjoyed it and very best wishes with your future studies. Hello, my name is Owen Cashman. Uh, I am just finished studying my four years in UCD, uh, studying animal and crop production. Um, I suppose I'm recording this video from, from my own home in, in Glamour, County Park, uh, due to restrictions. I suppose I'm not able to meet some prospective students in person, as would usually happen, um, or so I've been told. So hopefully this video will give you an insight into my time in UCD and to what I found um, what I found to be some of the highlights and best experiences of my life. Um, a lot of people ask me why I chose to study UCD being from Cork and having several options down here to pursue a career in, in the agricultural sector already. But I suppose on the back of the advice that I was given, um, UCD being the most established ag science course in the country, as well as having the opportunity to live in Dublin for four years, um, they were the initial reasons why I decided to go study in UCD. Um, having gone through the course now, I can understand why that is the census I was given because the teaching you get, the broad experience you get, the placement that I did abroad, they've all helped me to generate a very, very good understanding of what I want to do going forward and of, I suppose, 
what I'm passionate about within the agricultural sector. Uh, so I think that's very important for um, wherever you go study. It's very important that that is offered to you and that you get the opportunity to explore what you're, what you're very interested in uh, in your career going forward. Um, I suppose some highlights of my experience in UCD is always the social aspect. I've made incredible friends, I've made incredible staff, I've, I've done several inter internships uh, with my professional work placement. Um, I've gone abroad to the United States for working on pasture-based dairy farms there. Um, and it's all centered, I suppose, around what, what you're interested in and like the options are so broad that if you're interested from anything, anything from forestry to dairy to crops to ecology and biodiversity, there's there's an option there for you within UCD and School of Agriculture and Food Science. So, I, so in that regard, um, it was a no-brainer as why, why I chose to go there. Uh, I suppose over the last year, um, I've been asked to talk a bit about my role as the Careers Committee Chairperson, uh, which is a role that falls under the bracket of the Agricultural Science Society. Um, the Agricultural Science Society are usually known for our social events and I suppose getting the, the agricultural science uh, community together within UCD and um, I suppose raising a nice bit of money for charity as well along the way. But um, my role within that was um, as the Careers Committee Chair, which involved me providing a platform, I suppose, for students to inform themselves about their career options going forward, um, and as well as that, uh, hosting the Careers Day that happens in February of every year. Um, I suppose initially, to see the interest from employers coming through is incredibly encouraging for the agricultural sector, and again, seeing how broad the ranges of employers, you have anything from FIFs who are employing, who want to employ farm managers and farm operations managers in Honduras, to the likes of um, farm solutions in Scotland who are hiring farm managers for pasture based dairy farms there to the local companies who are hiring graduates like Dairy Gold, Glambia um, and other cooperatives um, etc. There, there, there are too many to name I suppose. Um, but as such my, my role really involved uh, organising that day which involved 50 in February which involved 50 um, exhibitors coming to meet potential students. Uh, we worked very closely um, the week of the day with the Agricultural Science Association. Uh, they ran mock interviews with us, uh, which gave the students a great opportunity to be placed in a position where they were in an interview situation with people who are at the top, top level in the agricultural science sector, who have interviewed people hundreds of times before. And I suppose that opportunity, to, that opportunity to get a carte blanche on your interview technique and your CV preparation is something that uh, is invaluable going forward and, and, and the, the ties that that UCD has with the Agricultural Science Association is something very important in terms of the career development of students within UCD in their final year. Um, uh, as well as this, uh, Richard Kennedy, the CEO of De Devonish, came on the day to, to give a keynote speech um, for the Careers Day, which again, seeing somebody who's come from where we are now to where he is uh, in terms of literally changing the food production chain for the better um, I suppose it's something very encouraging to see and it shows that with, with a little bit of ambition and a little bit of um, I suppose passion and, and drive and work, work ethic you can, you can do some great things within this sector um, I suppose because it's, it's constantly changing and the opportunities are, are constantly presenting themselves um, I suppose if I was to give advice to anybody who was submitting their CAO application um, as I was in, back in 2016 I suppose keep your options broad if you're not sure what well, I did, I do the omnibus version. Um, make sure that you talk to people and get, get good advice and sound advice. Uh, but my advice to you would be to really heavily consider UCD as an option. Uh, the opportunities for travelling abroad, for semesters abroad, they're, they're unparalleled really and, and I suppose while the food production sector is so big, in Ireland, it's, it's, it's quite tight knit, and you become part of a, a really, really nice community within UCD, and I suppose within Ireland, like you, you, you see friends from all over the place. So it's definitely a very good option um, to, to explore if, if you're considering it. Uh, so look, I hope I've helped in some way. Um, to I hope I've helped in some way to shape maybe an idea or a, a, a decision towards studying um, and, and developing an interest in the agricultural sector. We're facing a lot of challenges from pandemics to Brexit and um, to see that there are incredibly ambitious and incredibly passionate people uh, about the agricultural sector continuing to come on board I suppose is only a good thing 
um, and having talented people at the at the coal face of all this is, is where it's going to be. Um, it's where the sector is going to be. Uh, it's where the sector is going to succeed, or it's where it's going to fail. So look, it's it's, it's, it's very exciting, and um, who knows what the future holds. But hopefully, the first step for you guys might be studying in UCD like I did. Okay, thanks. Very much. I graduated from UCD in 2010 with a degree in food and agribusiness management and I joined the FICE International Graduate Program. Since then I've had placements in Belize, Costa Rica, Panama, uh, the UK and then back here with NRI. It's clear that the world of fresh produce is a very fast moving world and no two days are the same and each day presents a new set of challenges. Bananas by their nature have a very very short shelf life. So we have to work extremely hard to serve our customers all day 100% meaningful. Since the start of the COVID-19 outbreak, we've had to work even harder and smarter for technical employees for all to keep the supermarket shelves full. At the start of the crisis, we had the pleasure of hosting our people Leo Baradkar and also Minister Heather Humphreys here to our sword site, where we explained that we are keeping the supply chain open to feed the nation. I'm very fortunate and proud to be part of the FICE team. I hope sharing my experience with you will be some way useful. Every time I come in through any of the gates into UCD, uh, I get a buzz, I get uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm so, so invested in UCD because I, I have to recognise what it has done for me. And the Ag faculty and the Ag degree was the, the basis for, for what, uh, you know, what I am now. Hello everyone, Daniel Davey here, performance nutritionist with uh, the Dublin senior football team and Leinster Rugby. So I'm also a former Ag Science student and I was very fortunate, uh, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do when uh, I got into Ag Science. I um, was actually fortunate enough to get into Ag Science in the first place because it was only on a maths recheck that I got in. But um, long story short, I feel very, very fortunate to have got in uh, and to to have done Ag Science um, and to have made so many fantastic friends and met so many great people uh, along the way. Ag Science is one of those degrees that uh, I, I, I think the best way you can put it is that it's like a big family. Um, you feel like you're a part of something that's much bigger than just the course itself. Uh, even the years ahead of you uh, are friendly to you and there is something quite special. While there's lots of people from Dublin uh, who do the course, there's something quite special about the mix of country people and people from Dublin uh, doing the one course. So I have only very, very fond memories uh, of, of doing Ag Science. I suppose the thing that uh, I I, I, that really, really comes to me when I think about the, the course, along with the great people and the great lectures um, and all the friends, is the fact that there are so many different subjects and there's so many different uh, routes that you can take out of Ag Science. So I have friends who have not just gone on to be great farmers or working in the agricultural sector, whether it be in animal feeds or animal business or food science, Friends that have gone on and done veterinary, friends that have gone in and gone on and set up their own businesses. There's so much opportunity, um, and there's an incredible network that comes from that as well. But I think the fact that from from my personal journey, that I was in a position to do a course that allowed me to go on and pursue human nutrition uh, was was something that I'm very very grateful for. 
And I didn't know going into ag science that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, so uh, the fact that I was in a course that was science-based that had all of the subjects, the science subjects, and allowed me to go on and do that postgrad, uh, I'm very fortunate and it gave me a great, great grounding. Um, so my story is from ag science. I went on and, and, and I did a master's in nutrition over in the UK in, in nutrition and physical activity. Um, when I finished that, I came out and uh, I spent a year trying to figure out what to do next because uh, jobs were few and far between. I qualified then in, in strength conditioning. I did exercise and health studies. And then I started to look for work. And it did take quite some time before I was back in a, in a I suppose, put myself into a position where I could even look for a job in sport. But I eventually got that opportunity after working with school teams, with local club teams, with my own football team, with teams when I was over in the UK. So the big thing for me was I had the platform from my qualifications and from the different uh, the different routes I went from a, from a qualification point of view, but then it was about building experience. And then when you do get that opportunity and you are sitting in front of a head coach, it's about putting those two things together and showing that you really, really, really want to do it. Um, so I'm very fortunate that Ag Science gave me that platform. I'm very, very fortunate that I could go on and do what I really wanted to do, which I figured out while I was doing Ag Science was working in elite sport. Uh, and I am still very, very proud of the fact that I did go, uh, that I did Ag Science and I'm part of, of such a fantastic community. And even when you meet people uh, from the Ag Science community, you always go back to the same jokes, you go back to the same things and the same, same things that you really value. But if I suppose, if I was to reflect on it all, it's about giving yourself the best opportunity to pursue a career um, in a, even if it's in a general area. And that's the thing that Ag Science does. So from my perspective, I can only be very grateful for, for my time and getting through uh, Ag Science and it's setting me on, on the career path to go on and even do work in television, have my own business. I've written a recipe book um, and who I have my own website now, but who knows what's next. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it certainly certainly all started. It started from a qualification point of view. It started certainly started there. I hope that was some help. Well, a big hello to everyone taking part in the UCD summer school. My name is Mairead McGuinness, I'm First Vice President of the European Parliament and I'm a UCD graduate. It's a long time ago, 1980 to be precise, and I studied agricultural science specialising in economics. Um, and I have to say it has stood me really well. Um, I was just reflecting before doing this video on the good times in UCD. There were tough times as well, but all the good times and of meeting so many people and of staying connected to many of them over the years. Funnily enough, when I was your age, I was actually interested in journalism, but I was also interested in agriculture and I came from a farm. So I studied agriculture, as I said, and when I was graduating, I was lucky enough that RTE were looking for trainee radio producers. So myself and a colleague, we went across to RTE from UCD, we trained as radio producers, he got offered a job and I didn't because things were difficult in RTE. So what did I do? I didn't walk away, I asked RTE, was it work? I fought for a contract and I ended up working in television in RTE. I worked with, uh, as a researcher with The Late Late Show, I worked with Gay Byrne, I worked with many other people as well. I also worked on the original farming programme Landmark and then I was subsequently going to move on many, many years later to the, the still running RTE programme from ear to the ground. And you know, I have uh, four children, the twins are almost 27 and I was pregnant with them when Ear to the Ground started. So it has really run really well as a programme and I'm very proud that myself and a few AGs were responsible for getting that programme on air and for it continuing today. So just a bit about what I did. So I went into RT, I moved to the Farmer's Journal. I moved from um, the Farmer's Journal into the Irish Independent. I did local radio. So I had, a, I suppose, um, 
I suppose I wanted to do those sort of various things, maybe do them together. I wanted to challenge myself um, and I did that. Then in 2004, um, I had been thinking about politics but wasn't sure where or how this would come about. And sometimes when you're open to possibilities rather than have a fixed mind or you're determined in one direction only, opportunities will come your way. And I think that's what happened when I first stood for election for the European Parliament. Um, I would have been a Fianna Gael supporter, the party were looking for a candidate and I stood for election and I was successful and now in 2020 I'm still a member of the European Parliament um, I've moved up the ranks in the Parliament itself through sheer grit and determination and I'm glad that as an Irish MEP I am the first vice president the second in line to president of the Parliament particularly in these times of economic uncertainty and pandemics it's important that Ireland has a strong voice in all of those conversations so I would credit the things I've done to my roots in UCD, to my learnings in the Ag faculty, as I still call it, I'm sure it's called something fancier today, and the people I met along the way, the networks that still exist, and those connections are hugely important to me. The other thing I would say to you, that none of us have any certainty, so I was hugely uncertain and anxious and fearful when I went to college. I was younger, I was only 17, so leaving home was a big thing for me, and it took me a while to settle down, even though where I'm from in RD wasn't miles away from from Dublin but you know it was when you're leaving home for the first time and you probably will have to deal with those and other challenges along the way and I think you have to be I suppose build an inner resilience and inner strength even today in my career there are things you know that would really you know cause you to you know get a, almost a shock when people might react in certain ways to things that you do and you have to find a resilience within yourself to be able to deal with them and we all need that sort of shield so a few things if you're thinking of going to UCD do because it was a great place when I was there and I bet it's even greater now it's certainly bigger so it has to be better the second thing I'd say to you is that um, enjoy when you're there uh, make the most of college I often look back and think gosh I should have really enjoyed it more those four years seem to go really really quickly um, but I did enjoy them and I enjoyed the uh, you know the, the chats the linking with people lecturers and all that went with it and I value that to this day and the other thing is, you know, sometimes people study something or they think, I, I, I have to stay in that. But you don't. I mean, I think the things we learn in college allow us to be flexible and adaptable. So it allowed me as a, an I graduate, as I still call myself, to become a reporter, a researcher, a producer, an editor and a politician. And now um, in the European Parliament as, as VP. Um, and I think that that's the great thing about college learning generally, that it's no loss to you. It's always of benefit. So, look, I'm a UCD woman through and through. I value everything I did, everything I got from UCD. And I, I really would love you to get that same experience, um, particularly when it comes to the connections, the college um, associations, all of those things that happen. Um, and then you'll kind of look back like me in whatever years it is now and say, gosh, I'm glad I went to UCD. I really enjoyed it. It's a great place and I want to tell more people about it.